So as I understand it, CSAs started in Japan as the Teike movement, and it was a group of uh, mothers who were increasingly um, dissatisfied with the way that the food system had become industrialized, and so they went and contracted, they found a farmer, and they uh, paid the farmer basically to grow the food in the older ways that didn't use the chemicals and weren't on the large industrial scale so that their families would have the same kind of food that they had grown up with that they felt was higher quality. Um, and from there it moved into Europe. That was probably in the 60s, uh, early 70s. Um, and in the U.S., uh, sometime in the 80s, the first CSAs started. And um, that's where the term CSA actually came for, from CSA standing for Community Supported Ag Agriculture, or sometimes uh, it's also called cooperatively supported agriculture. Um, <clears throat> that beginning was more of uh, consumer driven than farmer driven and in the U.S. it's morphed somewhat uh, the other direction where now a lot of farmers have picked up that model and are starting to sell shares of the farm like we do here. Um, so we actively uh, look for community support and members to buy shares of the farm early in the season. So in the springtime they'll sign up for a share and they'll make a commitment to the farm that they will uh, pay for an entire season's worth of produce from that farm, our farm, um, and we will in turn provide them with the best produce that we can um, for the full season. It works out really well for us uh, because we get the money or at least some of the money up front when we're incurring our base, biggest expenses buying seed and uh, amendments for the farm um, and we're also doing our marketing in the winter um, when we have less of a workload out in the fields um, and then we can concentrate on growing the best vegetables possible harvesting packing that kind of thing um, during the summertime, the peak season, instead of having to worry about that at the same time that we're worrying about how we're going to get the food to the families. Um, those families then can come out and they can uh, also participate in the farm. We do a weekly newsletter, so it's created a lot of connection for urban families to um, the rural uh, just outside the city and a direct connection to their food source, which has been lacking in the, in the modern industrial model. I founded Soviet Island Organics in 1993. The mission of our small farm has always been to bring fresh, locally grown produce to the greater Portland area. We've grown from a one-acre farm into a 10-acre farm, from having no employees to having nine employees, from doing 30 CSA members to having a 200 member CSA program. We used to do farmers markets. We've decided not to do that to concentrate on our community supported agriculture program and the restaurants we sell to. We used to sell to about three restaurants and now we sell to 23 restaurants. We encourage you to all support the local food movement. Join a CSA, shop at the farmer's market, support chefs and restaurants that buy from local farmers, ask good questions, visit farms. In the winter, we spend a lot of time perusing seed catalogs and reviewing our notes from the season to make a planting plan for the following season and um, planning for our 200 member CSA and our restaurant production. This involves selecting varieties. We grow about around 50 crops and about 100 varieties of different crops. So uh, it's quite a, quite a bit of planning that happens at that time of year that then is planted out through the growing season. So here we are in the greenhouses at Sovie Island Organics. This is where a large percentage of our crops start their lives. Um, we've got two structures that we work with. One of them is this heated greenhouse that we're in right now that has a fan set up and a heater and a propane tank that runs a bottom heat system that 
keep soil temperature nice and toasty for all of our seedlings. Um, and most things start their life right here in this space, most of them on this table. And as they grow on and grow up and mature, they move from this house into our next house that is unheated. Uh, and we have a little bit more control over venting. Basically the idea is that as things mature and head, head on in their life towards being in the fields, they need to go through a process of hardening off. So they have to toughen up and get ready to be out in the harsh reality of the real world. So all of the seeding that goes on in the greenhouse is either done by hand, like Martine is doing here. Um, we have different sized trays and depending on the crop and how long that crop is going to stay in the cell tray in the greenhouse, we choose the size tray to put it in. Um, in this case, he is seeding collard greens, which are pretty quick. They come up in about four weeks and then go out into the field. So they get to be in this tray for about a month and then out they go. The other tool we have on the farm for seeding, which is new to us this year, is a vacuum seeder. And this has been an amazing labor-saving device for us. Essentially, it's a vacuum cleaner um, that creates a, a suction system. Um, and you're about to see how it works. But it's allowed us to go from uh, you know, it taking 15 minutes to seed a tray to a minute. So you'll see Molly is going to take the tray off and 128 seeds have fallen precisely into each cell in that short amount of time. When we take uh, the produce into town for our drop sites, we also take in five gallon buckets, which lets our CSA members bring us their compost every week in exchange for a clean bucket. Then we'll take the buckets back to the farm every week. Um, we start to build a compost pile throughout the season. Uh, and then we use the compost from the season before in our transplants, in our potting soil mix, in the greenhouse process. In addition to the other crops that we grow, we also do a salad mix. Uh, that salad mix contains a variety of greens so different, six different varieties of lettuce, arugula, mizuna, mustard greens, tatsoi, and kale. And the mix changes through the season depending on uh, the temperatures and the different conditions each green prefers. The greens are all seeded, direct seeded, into the fields in these beds and they take between three and four weeks to go from seed to a leaf that we will cut for salad. And we also use a floating row cover, this white fabric you see right here, to protect the greens from flea beetles, which are a pest that really enjoy uh, greens in the brassica family. And the white floating row cover acts as a barrier between the pests and the greens. We have two irrigation systems on the farm that we use. Um, we use drip irrigation, which is using plastic tubing that sends water very directed towards each plant and then we also overhead irrigate. Uh, for overhead irrigation we run our water in the evenings um, through the night so to prevent a lot of evaporation and loss of water that way. One of the ways that we control weeds here is by flaming them and that's what I'm going to do now.
Before we transplant into beds, we mark the beds with this uh, farm-made bed dibbler, which is just an old barrel that has cut pipe welded onto it. And the dibbler marks every foot, and then we figure out based on that where to plant our plants at the spacing they need. Today we're planting sugar nut melons, which are a Spanish type melon with a white flesh. And they get planted every three feet. These were started in the greenhouse uh, probably about three weeks ago and were on the germination table and then moved into the blue house to harden off and are now get planted, getting planted out and we'll probably be harvesting them sometime at the end of August. Two years ago, the farm invested in these hoop houses, which are unheated hoop houses, and we purchased them to be able to extend our season. Uh, in the winter time, we grow salad greens in this space, and the coverage helps the greens to stay dry um, and protects them from the relentless winter rains that we get here. And we also use them in the rest of the season to grow some heat-loving crops, such as melons. Uh, we also tried some early roots this year in these hoop houses. Uh, these carrots were seeded at the end of February, which is pretty early for us to get carrots in the ground. And they're right now just starting to come on. So they're early carrots for us. So today we're digging about uh, three different varieties. We've got Yukon Golds, uh, Sangres, and Yellow Fins. And right now everybody back here is digging Yellow Fins. Um, we've gotten all the Sangres out of the ground so far and all of the Yukon Golds are in. Um, and some of those Yukon Golds are headed back to the farm kitchen where they're going to start making french fries for everybody. In about an hour and a half or so we'll head in, we'll stop digging potatoes and we'll have a big lunch with everybody. The farm serves all the volunteers lunch and that's kind of um, an opportunity for everybody to do a little bit more socializing after the work hour. I want to get these sections down here cleared out. There's quite a few, mostly potatoes down here. We're out here picking potato or digging potatoes today. I've been a member of CSA, Sylvia Island Organic, for eight years. And one of the big reasons is because my daughter, who's seven, um, I grew up eating totally organic as a kid, living on a farm and growing our own food. And so that was one of the big things for us is to join a, a CSA so that we got fresh vegetables for our family. Hi, I'm Lori and Molly and we have Jude and little Edie and I've been part of the farm for five years and this is our second year of coming out to the potato harvest and it's great to be part of the farm and Molly and her family this is their first year of being part of the farm and got them out here to dig some potatoes and see where the farm's all about and get dirty and get dirty and uh, we just really love being part of the farm because every week you never know what veggies you're going to get and, and you get to create a new dinner uh, based on the vegetables that you have. So we love it. Yep. 
Right now, uh, we're harvesting salad greens. This is arugula, a uh, little baby arugula that we're harvesting for the mix. Um, there are a number of different components that go into the salad mix, including mizuna and baby chard, tot soy, kale, um, and then little baby lettuce that we grow specifically for the salad mix. Um, we sell the salad mix to local restaurants and also some of our CSA, CSA members who buy it as a special addition to the share. When we bring the greens in from the fields, we dump them into these big wash tubs that we have here. Um, that gives the greens a chance to get a cool off after being in the, in the heat from the fields. Then we'll put them into a washing machine that we modified um, that we use on the spin cycle to act as like a lettuce spinner. Then from the spinner we put them into this which is our salad mixer. We dump all the different components um, of the salad mix into this, close it up and it spins around and sort of tosses the greens together to mix up all the components. From there we then bag the salad um, to the orders that we get from restaurants and for our CSA and that's a finished product. So I'm washing lettuce today. I just got brought it out of the fields and this is a summer crisp lettuce. It's part of the iceberg family so it has a very crunchy texture um, but doesn't head up like a iceberg would. Uh, so this Lettuce will be traveling to into town today and some will be traveling into town tomorrow to go to our CSA members and it's pretty straightforward just getting it wet to decrease the respiration process of it and uh, keep it cool, get it a little bit clean get out any insects or bugs or right here you see we have a frog swimming around in our pool. We'll let that one go so it doesn't head into drop with the rest of the lettuce. So in addition to all the produce we grow here at Sovie Island Organics, we also grow a wide variety of flowers, both for our CSA members, for restaurants, and for sale um, to a local co-op. This one here is called Gallardia. It is a wonderful summer perennial that will bloom all season long during the summer months. Um, and it's just one of more than 50 different flowers that we grow um, for making mixed bouquets. Uh, we also do weddings for people. Um, and like I said, we sell to a local co-op as well. Um, the flowers are a really wonderful addition to the farm, not only because they bring us a lot of enjoyment just for the beauty alone, but they also provide an amazing amount of habitat for beneficial insects on the farm. Um, so this is where we see all kinds of honeybees, pollinators, uh, surfid flies, things that will eat pests on the farm. We see butterflies. Um, hummingbirds, you name it. So it's a wonderful place to get to spend my mornings when I'm harvesting for all the CSA shares and other, other bouquets we sell to the restaurants. Today I'm sorting the tomatoes from yesterday's harvest. These are all heirloom tomatoes that the farm grows and heirloom tomatoes tend to be varieties, older varieties that are not as um, well bread for shipping and keeping, which um, doesn't really matter for us because our produce gets to our customers in a relatively short time. These will be going out tomorrow. Um, these varieties on the scale are a uh, German striped tomato. This is one as well. And then there's a variety called Marvel right here. Um, this is another marvel. There's some variety within the variety. And then this is a black crim tomato. And then we have a black prince right there. And the heirlooms just tend to be a more delicate tomato um, and also have extremely great flavor and some great colors that you can see right here. 
and we're sorting today both for our restaurant pack out and our CSA pack out. So today Zoe and I are harvesting corn for restaurants and the CSA members and corn is something that we harvest only the day of. That is because once corn is taken off the stalk the sugars will start to turn to starches and make it less sweet and we're, pick, we're growing sweet corn so it's very important to have it as sweet as possible. Today we're going to be harvesting a variety called sugar buns which is a yellow corn variety and we there's a lot of things we check for for ripeness. One is if the tassels are dried down. Uh, another indicator is whether or not the uh, corn is flagging or sticking off the stalk and rather than being tucked into the stalk. And then it's overall just girth. And so I'm gonna go ahead and grab a corn and uh, see if one's ready. So you can peel it back just a little bit and s notice that all the kernels are filled out really nicely um, and it's turning yellow which is good and then the best indicator to tell whether or not it's ripe or not is to taste it. Um, it's definitely ready, uh, very sweet, nice full kernels, and so we'll be giving our members probably 10 or so ears uh, this in this share, and uh, so they should be happy about that. All right, so here we are out in our Haygrove High Tunnels. This is a system um, of sort of modified greenhouses that we use both to grow winter greens in throughout the cold season for salad mix and then in the summertime we transition this space into growing hot weather crops like tomatoes and melons. Um, what you see here in my arms is a kind of assortment of the different melons we're growing this year, a number of specialty melons that we're both giving out to our CSA members and also selling to restaurants, um, many of which we've never grown before. So sort of a mystery harvest for us this year, learning kind of all the quirks of each of the varieties when they like to be harvested um, and how to get the timing just right because that's pretty key with melons. So uh, this is called a tigger. It's a really nice little small orange fleshed melon. Uh, we've got honeydew right here, a sugar nut, which is a Spanish style melon, and then a charlin, which is sort of like a cantaloupe. Let me cut one of these open for us. The best part about melon harvest is that it always involves a lot of taste testing. So there we've got a really nice ripe melon. This morning we harvested all the produce for our drop today and it was in the cooler during the day cooling off and now we're loading up or have loaded up the truck and are ready to go into our afternoon drop um, from 5 to 7 at Friendly House.
We're here at the Northwest Portland CSA drop site on Thursday evenings. I come here every other week. Um, another person does the, the weeks in between and we have about 46 members who pick up here which is a pretty good portion of our CSA and when they first get here they can drop off their CSA their compost buckets and uh, we have a compost exchange program um, so they can do that here and then they come and sign in and pick up a newsletter and then they can see immediately on our whiteboard um, what we have in the share for the week and this week is a wonderful week full of beautiful vegetables um, we have melons for our members everyone's getting one melon we have three different varieties um, this week which is exciting um, we have some corn some carrots eggplants green peppers, a jalapeno pepper, uh, butterhead lettuce, a couple kinds of summer squash, lemon cucumbers, cucumbers, garlic, cilantro, early cascade tomatoes, and a beautiful heirloom variety of tomatoes called tigerella that I love. Um, also here we have members who have egg shares and salad shares and they pick those up at the drop site as well. And our flower shares. Member, so. That's it. Thank you. Hi, I've been in this CSA for almost nine years now, and uh, my family has been raised on the CSA. Um, Brennan looks forward to getting a carrot every week when it comes. Um, spring is awfully hard, waiting for the carrot, first carrots to come. But he loves all his vegetables, and I love that he's raised on farm fresh food. He eats seasonally. He knows, he knows when carrots come up and peas come up. He knows that tomatoes mean we're at the end of summer. <laughs> And he knows that he was waiting for corn and now it's finally big enough and he gets to have some. And I think that's really important for kids to have some connection to their food and, and how it's grown and how it matures. Um, and what tastes great and what the difference is between farm fresh food and shipped out food. Um, so I highly recommend farm fresh food. Picking up my veggies at the CSA here, Sylvia Island Organics. Uh, I, was a, I was an organic farmer and I ran a CSA, so to me it's real important. I'm not a farmer anymore, so I believe it's real important to be part of this kind of arrangement. I love the variety of vegetables. It's fun being on the receiving end now, getting a, a basket. I don't know what I'm going to get each week, and then uh, getting into the kitchen and trying to cook it all up and serve it to the family. It's, it's great. It's great stuff. It's local. It's fresh. It's the best tasting stuff you can get around town, so I, uh, I think it's really important to support this kind of alternative economics and something that's coming right, right from two miles away versus two thousand miles away. Community supported agriculture, CSAs, are so good not only for the people who eat the wonderful vegetables, but for the soil in which they grow and for the growers. It gives them a chance to get their money in advance, to uh, plant their gardens, and to share the risk if in fact some strange bug comes through this season and wipes up a particular crop. It's not all on the farmer's head. We get to share in there. And we also share in the, those years that are bumper crops. We've had some good broccoli years, let me tell you. Anyway, I also am very pleased with community supportive agriculture because young people often intern in the programs and it's a way of sharing good food, good cooking, we get recipes in our weekly newsletter, and again, the value of good organic vegetables. We're out in the fields today planting garlic here at Sylvia Island Organics. Uh, my son, my three-year-old son said to me today, Mama, everybody's hands are dirty. And uh, he was right. This is one of the exciting things about being part of a community-supported agriculture farm is that four times a year we invite the community to come and help us during work parties. And that's either planting or harvesting. You saw a potato harvest party and this is our garlic planting party. Another really exciting thing about the garlic planting party, which is happening, is that we are planting garlic now in October, but actually this garlic will not be ready for harvest until July. So these CSA members are actually planting what they're going to be harvesting and eating next summer. So now in October is a time that we start um, putting a lot of the farm fields to rest. We've done a lot of cover cropping. Uh, many of our summer crops are finished for the season. Tomatoes, eggplants, cucumbers, summer squash. 
And we're starting to get some of our exciting fall crops. We've pulled winter squash, pumpkins are coming out of the fields, we're looking at giant rutabagas, cabbages, we're getting back to kales and chards and our hardy greens. So this is all about being part of a CSA. It's eating seasonally and knowing what comes with the bounty of summer and what comes with the bounty of fall as we head into winter. We'll be giving our CSA members produce through the last week of November um, into the first week of December. And the last drop, we give them a, a large bulk drop so that that will last them for at least a month. And then what we do is um, things slow down a little bit for us. We do a lot of planning for the next season, but really our greenhouses go back on in February when we start uh, to seed another round of our uh, onions and leeks. So um, things come back around re real quickly, real quickly for, for us. One of the sad things about this time of year is that we have to say goodbye to our wonderful second year apprentices. So they will go on to start their own farms or work in sustainable agriculture, but luckily we still have our first year apprentices here who will work with us through this time next year. And then starting in May, we'll have another crop of first year apprentices, apprentices joining us.